Hello from the land of TV. This is King Cool with another episode of King Cool's Distracted Movie Reviews. I think I'm asleep. Today on the show, well, for this whole month, we're going to be starting my first theme month, which is uh, what I'm going to call uh, Disney Sequel Month. I thought about, well, maybe Unnecessary Sequel Month, but we'll see if they're unnecessary. I was going to say, oh, direct to DVD, but I'm not positive they all went direct to DVD. So, every. Ah, uh, lag spike. I don't know how this game's gonna do that. I'll grab this. So, every uh, Friday, I'm gonna watch a new, uh. uh. game, uh. I'm gonna watch a new, um. uh. uh. like, uh. sequel to a Disney movie. But the twist is, none of these movies are movies that I saw originally. Um. So, they're all. I'm gonna be watching the, the sequels completely out of context. Uh, so, I died and didn't get to introduce the movie. The movie for this week is The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea. And I'm going to put some vitals up on the screen for you so we know what to compare these two as far as, uh, you know, all this information should be up there now. Um, I don't have it with me, so I'm just going to put it up later. Um, so, now I, I saw The Little Mermaid back in the day, like, when I was like eight or something. It came out in 1989. I was, uh... Six or something in 1989. I I don't have any direct memory of it as a child except for watching uh, Ursula get stabbed uh, that one time. Oops, spoilers. The bad guy in a Disney movie happened to uh, 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 come upon a bad end. Uh, I'm sorry if that I just blew your mind with that little uh, nugget of uh, trivia. But anyway, uh, Return to the Sea. It starts out with um. It starts out with. Uh, uh, the birth of, uh, of, um, the Little Mer of, uh, Ariel and, uh, Eric, I guess is his name's daughter, and, um, and, uh, they're about to bring her out to the sea because they want her to live a life of both the sea and the land, because, you know, she's half mermaid or whatever. Maybe she's all human now or something. They don't really get into that too much. I sort of wanted her to have one leg that was a fin, but... I guess that would have been too much to ask. You know, everyone, and they have this song. The song they start out with, they're really limping uh, with this one. It's not a very good song. Um, and it's like, they could have started out with a better one. Um, I want that mega armor. So, uh, what happens is they're all out, they're going to have this big celebration because she's just, you know, just been born. She's like one, you know, one day old or something. And they bring her out, and uh, all of a sudden, this witch comes out. And it's a witch with, uh, you know, uh, uh, octopus feet. And it's like, oh no, it's Ursula. It's like, no, it isn't, because she's thin. Um, and you hear Sebastian go, uh, uh, it's Ursula's, uh, mad sister. Uh, they say this before saying the character's name, which is a weird step, because, like, okay, but they think they have to establish first that it's her sister, and then later establish that, uh, her name, which is Morgana. It's like, that seems like a weird order to do that in, but all right. Uh, they, they vanquish her. And don't allow her to, uh, to you know, to, to, to take uh, her daughter to the wherever, to the to the ocean, and, and try to get the, the trident. But um, she says like, "Yo, I'm gonna." Damn it! I'm gonna slow down. This was happening in Quake too. I gotta find out what program's running in the background that's causing that. She's like, "If she ever goes in the water, I'm gonna find her." So basically, they disavow her uh, her uh, Ariel's. Uh, mermaid heritage and raise her as a human and there's a big wall inside the castle and now she's like oh but of course her daughter has a, a love of the sea that can never be uh, that can never be tamed in fact she even confides in Sebastian who for some reason is charged with uh, watching over her even though you know he's like you know eight inches long and it's like well uh, he's gonna be really good defense when the the wizard uh, octopus lady comes up and uh, and wrecks everyone's shit. So, um, she starts sneaking out, and, uh, they, they, eventually, uh, Morgana stumbles upon her, and is like, ooh, I'll be able to help her to get King, Tr uh, Triton's trident, and then I can rule all the seas. Oh, uh, one thing, I'm gonna bring this up, it was back in the first song. One of the reasons I didn't like the song was, they have a Sebastian, who, by the way, Sebastian is always hilarious, so, Sebastian it can be in as much stuff as he wants, and that is all fine with me. But 
in the song he goes, it's like, uh, oh, we're all, you know, he's talking about people in the sea. Like, oh, we're all celebrating from sea to shining sea. It's like, okay, sea to shining sea is the description of America, a long continent that stretches from one ocean to the other. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to describe the ocean as from sea to shining sea. Is it just me, or does that not make any any sense at all? Is this a door? Oh, frig. Um. So yeah, the first song is not that great. There's only four songs in the entire uh, movie, but this is going to lead me into that uh, segment that I know you all love called... The fuck? Uh, I don't often check out the bonus features in the DVD, because I just want to get them out of there so I get my next disc uh, in something uh, resembling a reasonable amount of time. But, um... But, uh, uh, this time I, I checked them out, and there's a song that's been deleted. Not only that, it's Morgana's song. It's her villain song. I forget what the name of it is. It, I, it's at the end of my notes. Um, oh, Tonight's the Night or something, which she's like, alright, finally I'm gonna get my revenge and whatever. And I'm like, Really? You cut this song? You cut the villain song, which is always the best song in all the movies? The fuck? Anyway. So, yeah, um... The animation, you know, it's okay, I guess. I, I, I don't remember. Obviously, this was ten years after, um... After, um... Uh, Return of Jafar, which I remember, even at the time, not being super impressed with it. Um... Nice. Not being super impressed with the animation on that, because it looked a lot like the TV show, which, you know, it's fine for a TV show. But, um... But, you know, it's just like, oh, come on, we can do better than this, can't we? Uh... Wow, he did not wake up. <laughs> nice. Because I think, um, Morgana lives in, like, the Arctic. They never say it exactly, but there's ice everywhere, so... Um, two new sidekicks appear who are a, a walrus and a penguin. And, uh, they're sort of annoying. Honestly, I don't really, I was not really thrilled with them. Even though the penguin is voiced by Max Casella, who some of you might recognize from that one episode of, uh, Sopranos, or I think a couple, where I think he gets the shit kicked out of him. Uh, or, I fucking knew it. Um, or, uh, from, uh, Dak, uh, Jack from Dak and Daxter. Like, the voice cast is a cornucopia of famous voice actors. One of the things I liked is that, um, Flounder is an adult now. Because it's been ten years. Nobody else looks that much older. She just looks like herself, um, oh, I don't want to be there. Uh, Flounder, I was like, I wonder if they voiced him by, uh, the same, the, the kid, just grown up. The way they did with Toy Story. Uh, no, it's just, uh, it's Cam Clock, who is, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, a fairly prolific voice actor. In fact, Eric, who I don't know who played him in the, uh, in the movie, I don't think it was, but this time he's, uh, Rob Paulson, uh, who's another, uh, uh, quite prolific, uh, voice actor, um, who probably some of you don't know who it is, but if you know anything about Animaniacs, you know who this is, um, and in fact, um, Melody, who is the daughter of, uh, oh, god, crap, the pain in the ass, ah, son of a bitch, Melody is voiced by Tara, Chenderhoff, and I'm gonna mispronounce your name. I'm terrible sorry. She goes by Tara Strong now. I think she got married. Um, how do I get in there? There must be a way. Um, but, um, who's another one? She's voiced, like, uh, the Princess Claire and Toot on, uh, Drawn Together, and all kinds of... These are all... This is a who's who of, uh, a famous, uh, voice actor, if you care about that, which I do. But I also recognize that very few other people give a crap about that sort of thing. There's a lot of time spent on these two other characters, uh, um, the, you know, the, um, the, the penguin and the walrus, and they're just not that interesting, I'm sorry to say. I wish the news was, uh, better, but they're sort of, it's not that they're not dull. Let me down! I'm not ready to go up there yet. Yeah, I gotta find out what's causing that, that, uh, slowdown. Uh, the one thing is weird is, um, seeing Ariel as a mother, Ariel, I mean, someone's gonna dispute me on this. I know someone's gonna be like, no, Ariel, I'm not gonna, I, I, I hesitate to say this, but Ariel is sort of a weak character. She's, you know, a very young girl, and she's like, oh, I've gotta do this, and it's not that, she, I'm not saying that she's not strong or whatever, but as far as, like, could you picture her as a mother scolding someone? I could barely do so. Who the hell is shooting me? 
How did I lose that much health? Um, I just don't really picture her in that sort of, uh, in that sort of, uh, role, really. I know that obviously, you know, everyone becomes a mother someday, but she's just so, uh, so sort of weak. It's weird to see her as a, uh, as a, mo as a mom have to be, you know, be all momly and, and, you know, it's, it's strange. Where's that health pack? Switch back to regular shotgun. So I, I guess uh, let me look through my notes. Um, and and uh, at one point, uh, get out of here. At one point, um, Ariel says, "Oh, to her daughter. Oh, it's hard being a teenage. Where did you come from? You weren't there before. It's hard to be a teenager." It's like, yeah, but you're. She's twelve. You guys have said she's twelve. In fact, you made it very clear that they're putting twelve candles on her birthday cake, which. I, if you can't think of a better way to introduce someone's age, why don't you just leave it alone? It's like, okay, 12. 12 is a very sort of unimportant age. Uh, it's the only thing that's important is that it's a dozen. I'm a dozen years. Big, big deal. 13, you're, you're then a teenager. And 16, you can drive a car if you're not a fish person. And then when you're 21, the Gorton's Fisherman comes over and kills you. Uh, on life day. Or whatever. I don't know, I'm getting, I'm getting way off, uh, off, uh, off, off message here. But I mean, obviously, I mean, the Little Mermaid is, is, is an easy choice as far as what to make the sequel of. But um, and there's certain parts of this that reminded me a lot of, of Aladdin, for you know various reasons. Um, I really shouldn't wake him up when the credits run. I'm not going to say how it ends because you know, you can probably figure it out, even if you were just under a rock for 23 years. Um. Uh, but um. It ends with uh, Part of Your World being sung by some other lady, some some country singer or something, I think. And uh, it's sort of like, that to me is sort of the concession that nothing in this movie is all that great. You know, that they're, that they're ending it on the song from the last movie, from 1989. And, you know, I, at the end of the day, I can't, I can't really recommend this uh, to any, uh, uh, any great extent. Um... But, uh, what am I hitting there? I guess it's a specter. It's a specter, I heard him. Yeah, you come in out of nowhere when that... Um, sometimes I was watching, it's very short, it's about 70-something minutes. Like, not including the, you know, seven-minute, uh, credit sequence. You know, let's say, oh, 85 minutes. Like, no, it's it's just barely over an hour. Um, which is fine. It never, it never, like, uh, thankfully, it never feels like it's dragging. That would be, uh, completely absurd uh, for a movie this short to feel like it's dragging. But, um, but, uh, sometimes it just feels like little scenes that you're used to seeing in other movies that have more... Uh, more to them are just missing. And it's weird to, to think of that. It's just like, ah, oh, this is just, it just feels like they didn't have all the pieces. I mean, you know, big surprise. They, uh, a directed DVD, I think it was a directed DVD sequel, isn't that great. Do I have anything else I want to make certain I say? And I'm going to say this. A crab does not have enough mass to, uh, to completely destroy a birthday cake the way they show there. And also, her birthday cake is huge. Her birthday cake is like two and a half stories tall. I have a rocket launcher. When I get that? Yeah. Thought you might have something on your sleeve. It might be able to bite me up the uh, up the thing, just because of the way the engine is coded funny. These guys can't fire at me. I love the super shotgun. Have I ever said that? I know I've said it in my life, but I don't think I've said it. I don't think I've said it here. You know what? Screw you guys. I think this seems like an appropriate place to stop. I'm sure I've gone on too long. I think that's it. Oh! You know what? I gotta... <laughs> so dumb. I got a bag of chips sitting here that I haven't done for, um, how loud is this chip, but I guess I'll save them for next time. Just shows how, uh, uh, how focused I was at this.
But nevertheless, this is King Cool. Drive home safe.